What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. The 2JZ engine has played a special role in TRC's history since 2011. Starting from their first 2JZ powered 240SX, the project that hit sevens back in 2013, and the iconic TRC Supra dominating the streets in 2015. This engine has shaped not only our channel, but countless enthusiasts in the community. That's why we wanted to do something truly special. We've built the ultimate 2JZ to give you the chance to live out your 2JZ dreams. I'm beyond excited to announce that our very first dream engine giveaway features none other than the legendary 2JZ. We've partnered with Real Street Performance, Mozworks, Dart, and some of the most respected brands in the industry to bring you this TRC approved dream build. This engine was meticulously spec'd and built by our team, leveraging over a decade of 2JZ experience. It was then broken in and tested on Real Street's engine dyno. The winner of this engine giveaway will receive a complete Crate 2JZ engine, fully equipped with the latest and greatest supporting modifications capable of producing over 1300 wheel horsepower. We're talking everything from oil pan to valve cover, precision turbo, upgraded intake and exhaust manifolds, upgraded fueling, and so much more. The full parts list will be down in the description below, so make sure to check that out. Now, there's another kicker. For those of you guys who have been dreaming about a different engine or looking to finish your current build, we've got you covered. The winner will also have the option to take home $20,000 in cold hard cash instead of this 2JZ. So here's how it works. For every dollar you spend on our website, you'll automatically receive one entry for a chance to win. And for our special launch week bonus, we're offering an incredible 10 times bonus offer. For every dollar you spend, you get 10 entries. We've also released some brand new merch for this drop. Everything is on our website and ready to ship. Some items are super limited, so make sure, don't wait, make sure you grab them right away before they sell out. For the full details in this giveaway, make sure to visit thatracingchannel.com. Let's get into the action. Hey, how's it going? My name is Mark Mazeroski. Um, I'm the owner of Mazworks, and we're here today to uh, work with Javier on building this 2J using the Dart block. Now this is like going to be the, the mainstream block that the 2J owners would want because it's going to hold more than, you know, 12 to 15 on a horsepower the factory block holds, and it's going to be a lot more stable. Um, we tested this block with Real Street and their dyno session, and it, it worked out phenomenal. We had it back, we took it apart, we measured everything. Everything was stable at 18 on a horsepower on the engine dyno. So to use this for uh, the project is a, is a perfect match. With this brand new dart block, we got a, a brand new 94 millimeter uh, Brian Crower crank, we got, and we got a brand new OEM core 2JZ cylinder head. And we're gonna take you along the journey of this engine build from disassembly to machining, to cleaning, to every little nook and cranny of how this motor is built. And, and then finally at the end, we'll go through the assembly. The goodies that are going in this head are Supertech valve train, Got a nice ink canal, plus one valves, plus one intake, plus one exhaust. The BC dual valve spring kit with titanium retainers. You can see the dual springs. Supertech bronze valve guides. We're gonna take the stock ones out before the porting. We're gonna use the Kelford uh, DLC buckets. These are great because they're a lot thicker and they've been holding up pretty good. We like using these on all our builds. And to wrap it up, we're gonna use the BC stage three cams. These are the high lift cams. So the cylinder head does need to be machined for uh, load clearance and we'll show you that in the process. All right, with the 94 millimeter billet cranks, especially with billet cranks at all, we like using those on applications over 1200 horsepower. We've noticed that the stock crank turns in basically into a noodle at that power level. It's a softer crank, so it tends to flop around. We, when we get them back for service, you can see that they're a little more bent than they should be. So we have to straighten them. But with the billet cranks, after we run them that hard, even all the way up to 1800 horsepower, we get them back and they're still dead straight. So that's why we like going to the billet crank. This was traditionally the 3.4 liter setup, which if you use an 88 millimeter piston, it would yield a, a 3.4, but we're using 86 and a half. So that will bring it down to like a 3.312. With the extra displacement in the motor, you really won't necessarily make more power, but you'll definitely shift the power band left in the power range. So you'll get a little more lower end per se, more torque, um, and you won't have to rev the engine out as much to make the same amount of power. Start off, we'll be using Manly 86.5 millimeter pistons. These are the Extreme Series pistons. 
Come with 250 wall thick wrist pins. Turbo tough connecting rods. And the good thing about Manly is they actually pre-weigh them before they come and they let you know the weights of the big ends and the small ends. But we always like to double check them just to be sure. Now for the head studs, basically the same as the main studs, the, the point one head stud kit. I like their packaging, nice and big, vacuum sealed. King bearings, the race series. And that's pretty much it. So with the dark blot, it does take minimal work to get it done, but it does take some work. So the first thing we'll do is we'll break it down, we'll inspect it, take everything apart, clean it, make sure everything's good to go. We'll put it in the in the mill, and we'll, this, one's, this one's got a 94 millimeter stroker crank. There is some slight rod notching involved, so we'll, we'll notch it for rod clearancing. Typically, they're pretty close, but we like to give it about 60, 60 thou clearance, so we'll, we'll notch that. Um, it won't need much boring, so we'll do all that in the home. But the next step will be after notching for the rods, we'll clean it again, make sure it's 100% clean. We'll bring it back in the assembly room. We'll torque plate it, and we'll get the mains back on it, get everything torqued up and ready for final honing. Since it already has a final line hone done to it, we'll double check that. Sometimes after you pull the engines apart and put them back together, they shrink up a little bit the first few cycles. So we'll check for that. If it's needed, we'll go ahead and just touch up the line hone. These blocks come almost fully prepared. One of the biggest things you gotta do is they, they come a little undersized, 80, a little under 86 millimeter bore size. They're just bored, they're not honed. So you're, you're pretty flexible on what you can do with the cylinders. Um, we're gonna hone this one up to 86 and a half to match the pistons that were provided. And we actually go through and measure each piston and we'll match that piston to the cylinder to make sure we have good piston and wall clearance. Um, after this honing process, we'll take it, get it clean, and we'll get it ready for paint. Um, with these Dart 2JZ blocks, there's not much machining needed. So it's a pretty simple process and to get it ready to go for building the short block. And that's pretty much the, the whole processing of this block. There's not much needed, like a factory block. If we got a factory block in, it's a whole nother world. But this block needs minimal processing to get ready, ready for the, the short block assembly. All right, since we're starting with a brand new cylinder head, there's not much work needed to get it prepped. But if we did end up getting a used cylinder head, we would end up breaking it down, cleaning it, deplugging it, and sandblasting it so we can start fresh and ensure it's straight and it's, a, it's pretty much a virgin head. But since we're starting with a brand new casting, a lot of that we don't have to do. But the first thing we would do on this would, of course, break it down, get the cam caps off. We would deplug it. There's not much oil galleys in the 2J head, so I think there's three oil plugs that we pull out, tap, so we can ensure in, it's clean inside and out before assembly. After it's taken apart, it'll go to the head machine. We'll throw it to the seats, make sure they're the size we want for the port, then we would remove the valve guides. And now it's fresh and ready for a CNC port. So what we'll do is we'll get it in the machine in the first operation. Uh, we'll go ahead and probe the head to make sure the proper location. It'll, the cutter will go in there and it will pour out each uh, port on this. And then we'll go through and we'll cut the chambers so they're all equal. The second op is we'll flip it. Then while the head's in there, we'll go ahead and, uh, since he's running the BC 
stage three plus cams. We'll need cam clearancing, so we'll have the tool come in and cut the cams. And we'll go back here where the, uh, the water port is and we'll machine that for a Dash 10 ORB so it's nice and pretty. Once all the CNC machining is done, it'll go over to hand porting. He'll double check it, he'll deburr it. Typically with the used cylinder heads, after they've been eroded, we might get a little shadowing involved with the CNC toolpaths, so we'll blend those a little bit. He'll go through, double check, make sure everything's correct on the, on the porting. We'll go ahead and do a wash, a good clean wash on it, get it clean. Then it'll go back to the head station. Once it's at the head station, he'll install the valve guides and size them. And then after that, he'll start doing the valve job, cutting the valve seats, grind the valves, make sure everything matches. Then we'll, we'll install the buckets, the cams, we'll start tipping the valves to get the lash correct. He'll do one last surface on the head, even though this is a brand new head, through the working process, it might get a little bit scratch hair there in the machines. So we'll do one nice little skim on it. It shouldn't take much, maybe like two thou to skim this head. We'll go back to the, the engine prep area. We'll deburr it, do one last cleaning, and it'll come back in here for final assembly. Once he gets the valves and everything seated, we'll vacuum check it, make sure everything's good to go. There's no debris in it. He'll install the cam, the buckets and cams, and he'll roll it over and do another check on the lash. Because before, when we, when we lash it at the, at the valve station, it's not with the springs in it. So once the springs are in it, things will move a little bit. And he'll check that. If it needed, we'll, we'll take apart those, those valves and touch them up to make sure we get the correct lash. And once the lash is set, everything's good to go. He'll put the plugs in it, and it's ready to go to the assembly. Okay, we're at the ready, we're at the stage where we can start assembling the short block and finally assemble the complete engine. But after all the machine work was done, what we do is we actually reassemble the block, put the torque plate on, put the mains on, and we check the block for dimensional accuracy and do quality control of the machine work. So we've already done that. Same thing with the head, we'll install the cams. Uh, actually, but when we install the, the valves, we'll check tip heights, we'll check spring pressures, install heights, put the cams in, or uh, put the buckets in, put the cams in, check lash, make some adjustments if we need to. And we've already done that too. Um, what we've also done, we've already got the rods and pistons built. Before we actually put the rings on, the pistons, we'll have the piston and rod, we'll put that assembly in the, in the block, we'll spin it over. Since this is a, this is a stroker, we check for uh, rod clearance, basically at the bottom of the cylinder walls. Um, so, but we've already done that, and uh, we went through the process of rod notching this. We've built this package before, so we, we laid that out and we designed it in SolidWorks, so how much we need to take off the block. And from here on out, we'll just go ahead and do the assembly. All the, all the clearances have been checked, um, the housing boards have been checked, the piston walls have been checked, the piston wall clearances have been checked, uh, the main bearing, rod bearing clearance checked, the thrust bearing's been checked. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the scene together.
Our ultimate 2JZ dream build is almost complete, but we're not done just yet. In the next episode, we'll be breaking in the engine and putting it to the test on Real Street's engine dyno. You won't want to miss the results, so stay tuned. And remember, this engine could be yours, or you can choose 20,000 in cold hard cash. Every dollar you spend on thatracingchannel.com gets you entered for a chance to win. And don't forget, during our launch week bonus, you get 10 times entries. So check out our limited edition merch on thatracingchannel.com to get entered now. Thanks for watching.